Welcome to Installing and Configuring Windows Server 2019. In this course, we're going to go over Windows Server 2019, how to install it, and configuring some of the basic necessities like getting it connected to the network. First, let's talk about what Windows Server 2019 is and what's new about it. So if you're not familiar, Windows Server 2019 is the newest version of the Microsoft Server operating system. Windows Server operating systems are different from your typical desktop versions like Windows 10 in that they're built to run enterprise level applications. These servers can even run with a very minimal graphical interface, so they can be managed remotely. They can typically take advantage of higher grade hardware and address more memory than what you'd get out of a standard desktop computer. Windows Server 2019, like previous versions, has three different purchasing options. First, there's the Data Center Edition, and this is the most expensive and is licensed per core of the hardware you're installing it on. If you're not aware, typically each server has a physical processor, at least one, and then each of those processors has multiple cores. So if you have a server with two physical processors, and each one is a quad core, then you'd have a total of eight cores, so two physical processors times four cores in each processor. Data Center gives many additional features and licenses that you don't get with the other versions. Standard Edition is the most common, and that's what you're going to find running in pretty much most medium to large enterprise businesses. This is also licensed per core of the hardware you're installing it on, and gives you all of the typical features that you need. Lastly, there's Essentials, and this is mainly for small businesses with a small footprint, and it's about half the price of the Standard Edition. So what is new in Windows Server 2019? To start, System Insights, which brings local predictive analytics capabilities to Windows Server. This is all part of the AI machine learning thing that you're probably hearing about. Um, it's kind of the bud buzzword for this year and a little bit at the end of the last year. Next is Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection. Now, Windows Defender has been around for a while, but with Server 2019, it has more added to it, like reducing the attack service, protecting point networks, endpoint networks, protecting folders from ransomware, and even more protection. Linux containers running on a Windows host. You can now run Windows and Linux-based containers on the same container host. In previous versions, you could only run Windows containers within a Windows host. Encrypted networks allows encryption of virtual traffic between virtual machines. This is actually a really huge uh, feature that's been added, and it allows us now to actually create entirely isolated environments where even the transmission and the traffic between those two, between those servers in this isolated environment is encrypted. Huge, huge advantage that I'm definitely going to be spending a lot of time playing with. Network performance improvements for virtual workloads. It now maximizes the network throughput to virtual machines without requiring you to constantly tweak your host to get the best performance out of it. And a whole lot more that we're not going to have time to go into here. So in the next lecture, we're going to go and dive right in and obtain the ISO for Windows Server 2019, and then we're going to get straight into the install. Thanks for checking out my video on Introduction to Windows Server 2019. This was one lecture of the total six lectures that are part of my free course on Introduction to Windows Server 2019, where we go through and install, we configure networking, and we start and do roles and features as well. If you'd like to get this free course, check out my website at courses.thesysadminschool.com and sign up for the free course. Also, please check out my site at thesysadminschool.com for a lot of useful information on being a sysadmin and becoming a sysadmin if that's what your aspirations are.